This video was brought to you by Stoltenberg, Abed Root Planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power, and Marcus Biel. Yo, what's up? We are now at the PA head office in Bangkok, and behind me here you see Mercedes EQS 500. This is the uh, all-wheel drive version. So I tried the EQS 580 in Norway. So how is this one different? Well, the 580 has two equal motors in the front and the back. This one has a smaller motor in the front, so it should be more efficient. Okay, it's slightly less powerful, but maybe slightly better efficiency then. So I'm going to do Bangkok challenge with this beast. Oh man, my favorite car in Thailand is here. So by the way, hmm, here we don't have double glazed windows, unlike uh, the one in uh, Europe. And also we get slightly, I don't know, the, the, the uh, the, the seat seems a little bit different. I'm not sure there's no, no, none of that cushion part, but then look in the back. We have, well, on, let me just adjust here. We have screens here, huh? Huh, look at that, look at that. H-back setting in back here, ooh. Not too shabby, huh? Yeah, okay, but all right. Wait, wait, I need to put this one in the back. It's, it comes with headphones. Mercedes headphones, yeah, and oh, I actually like the EQS a lot better than the, than the i7 because look, look how much space we have in the back here. Yeah, there, there are more headphones there. Freaking headphones there. Let's just put the headphones there. Yeah, it's just so spacious compared to the i7. But okay, so uh, this one also has the 113 kilowatt hour battery. Wait, was it 113? 107 kilowatt hour net capacity. And then my plan is to drive 500 kilometers <laughs> from Bangkok to, this is Thun, there's 125 kilowatt fast charger. That's the fastest charger we can get on the route. This car can take 200 kilowatt, but we simply don't have that fast charger, but okay. So uh, yeah, uh, live stream is up and running. And I think that's it. We're going to reset some stuff here. And then off we go. We charge the car to 100%. It claims 600, ah, okay, whatever. We are on the move, yes, on the expressway, hammering it at 120 kilometers per hour, just like the other cars. Uh, now, I estimated that I have a budget of 214 watt hour per kilometer. Wait. Oh yeah, okay, the car complains because he can't see me. Yeah, all right, whatever. So, all right, yeah, we just have to hammer it. Uh, hopefully, we don't have too much traffic. Oh yeah, we have this hyper, hyper screen. I can see all the traffic and stuff, but that's probably beneath us. Oh yeah, and I have header display here. I have all the goodies, most of the goodies at least, as you know it from Norway, so yeah, wow, oh it's so comfy. I can't wait to see how this car rides in the bumpy parts of uh, Thailand for the north. So alright, I guess we're just gonna kick back, enjoy and enjoy the ride. Wait, wait, I have to check where I'm going. I'm actually using the navigation here also just in case I miss the turn. So yeah, and also navigation here, and, uh, yeah, whatever, whatever. All, all good, all good, oh yeah, oh yeah. Hmm, interesting. You see that uh, when we are cruising at these uh, constant speeds here, high-ish high, high -ish speeds, it uses only the rear motor. Uh, the front motor is more efficient, but maybe the gearing is better for the rear. Or, I don't know, maybe the driving feeling is better for the rear motor, I'm not sure. So, uh, yeah. But I guess in case it uses both motors, then at least it saves a little bit of energy versus the 580 version. Oh, and now that we are cruising slow, then he's using the front motor. Ah, oh, interesting. I wonder if it has something to do with the gearing. We have been cruising for a while and I figured that I have to cruise at 121 kilometers per hour to match 118 GPS speed, yeah. And the laser guys, they, yeah, they give you a ticket if you go one over 120 kilometers per hour. But okay, you see, we are getting close to Singburi. And uh, look here, if you go to this one, the uh, climate menu here, wait, wait. And then go to air quality. This is something I haven't seen in the European versions. I guess it's more important here. You see that external, we have uh, 44 
Yeah, P point, T, PM 2.5 level is, is 44 right now. And then inside the car is three. Oh yeah, very good. I wonder if this car has better uh, air filtering than, uh, than the, the Western cars or the European cars. Yeah. And then, okay, so far we have 188 watt hour per kilometer. Oh, that is very good. The budget is still 214 watt hour per kilometer. So that's good that we build up a little buffer. Yeah, or we have to drive even further before we charge. <laughs> we'll see, I guess. We shall see. All right, we just passed the police checkpoint at Singbuli and uh, I was pulled over. Uh, I was like, oh, 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 did I hammer it too hard? No, I, I, was, I was being good boy today, I promise. Yeah, except for maybe I, I did a little bit of undertaking. But the, the, the fun fact is that when they laser, they only laser the rightmost lane. So you can hammer very fast on the other lanes and supposedly they don't check on those lanes. Yeah, so um, yeah, and they, they pulled me over. I was like, huh, did they, did they check the other lanes? Uh, sheet. Well, they they uh, they check the car because it has red red license plate. Red license plate is temporary license plate, and uh, and they also look at some uh, some book in in the glove box. As there's a uh, a brown book, and you're supposed to, if you travel somewhere, you're supposed to write in the book where you're going. And I was like, um, well, but uh, okay, sorry, I, I don't know. This is a press car. It's from Mercedes, and uh, I'm I'm Norwegian. And he was like, huh, but. If you're Norwegian, how can you speak uh, Thai so clearly? I'm like, uh, well, I have a Thai wife. I was like, oh, okay, okay. And then they asked me some questions. And then, yeah, so I think by the book, literally, you're supposed to write down where you're going in that book. And I didn't do it. And he was like, okay, whatever. This guy's a noob. And then he let me go. But I did spend two, two minutes there. So we're going to deduct two minutes at the, the police checkpoint. Yes, we're going to be as fair as possible. Now we're stuck behind uh, freaking right lane hookers here. She. We have now arrived at Gampeng Pet. This is usually where most other cars need to charge and bail out. <laughs> but we still have a long way to go. Oh, okay, a little bit. I like the weather forecast and everything. Look at that. Oh, nice. What is the PM 2.5 levels here? Let me check. No, wait, wait. Climate menu. I have to go on here. Okay, it's still 46 outside. Okay, freaking hostile over there. But look here. We have now reached 50% of the battery. So Wow, and we've done 269 kilometers. So you see, in Thailand, you can drive over 500 kilometers at these speeds. It's just simply amazing. And also the consumption, okay, the consumption actually going up a little bit. It was hovering below 190 for the longest time. Now it starts going up, maybe because the temperature has uh, dropped a little bit, or I'm not sure. Yeah, but we still have to drive. Let me see, how far is it? Like this. Uh, no, what the heck, turn. Yeah, we're going to stop at turn. We still have to go 224 more kilometers. <laughs> so I did my preparation today, which is that I almost didn't drink anything. So I still don't have to pee yet. But okay, I don't want to talk about it. Otherwise I might need to pee. getting close to dark sun is setting or actually has it set now i think so yeah right so you see right here dark is over there we still 
we are just going to drive right past it and we still have 139 more kilometers before we are done well actually not done but yeah what, what damn man all these right lane huggers they are everywhere man i have to drive slalom between them yeah and oh yeah by the way let, let, let's try let's try let's try let's use the, the the left lane okay for you guys who don't know the reason why i hug the right lane is because let me teach you something all right the left lane in thailand is usually very poorly maintained uh, over here it just happened to be nice and smooth but yeah many many places it's really shitty and you could even risk of damaging your rims if you drive too fast in the left lane that's why i always hug the right lane and then in case some people come fast behind me then i move over to the left lane and let them pass yeah but it's mostly unlikely that uh, anyone will be driving much faster than me so yeah all right but anyway what was my point yeah, yeah okay we are now down to 33 uh, you see this is exactly the, the freaking truck mafia man the truckers they they tend to hug the right lane at night because then the bullet side is not watching so it's really bad sometimes at night they freaking lots of trucks are just hugging there and look how slow they're driving it's not like the euro trucks where they actually go at 80 88 kilometers per hour no these mother truckers they go dog slow yeah well okay so we're now down to 33 percent the consumption has gone up a little bit now yeah uh so it, i'm not sure why i mean it could be because the temperature has dropped so the air becomes slightly more dense or it could be because we can actually drive faster now because there are not too many right lane huggers over here so yeah just have to hold it i've been driving now for three and a half hours <laughs> non-stop without peeing test stretch where I usually demonstrate the auto steer uh, with its uh, good and the bad things but uh, let me show you the interior here look at this oh yeah and then if you take your hand over here it will automatically light up huh isn't that cool huh yeah all right let me see so um we're now cruising at 121 on the speed though uh, I just have to wait for some curves and I'll show you what happens with the EQS when you get in some curves versus the Chinese cars. Can you see we have a curve ahead? Let's see, uh, you can see the, the markings there. So it's not that sharp curve. And will the car slow down? No, why? Because it's not Chinese. <laughs> okay, I don't need to show more. This car is, runs so smooth around here. This is it, we are almost there <laughs> and we have done 477 kilometers in one go and we're now down to 8% battery left and we have 12 kilometers to go yeah so I checked the charter status it is available for now yeah but uh, it's interesting we have a follower behind us literally a follower behind us an auto 3 um, they are going to first they wanted to charge on the PT station and said okay well I mean it, it might mess up my test a little bit and then they they actually decided to uh, go to the PTT station instead because the other three uh, speed wise uh, it will actually receive the same speed um, on both chargers anyway <coughs> but they wanted to take a selfie with me but um, I have calculated that I need to charge uh, I don't remember how many percent uh, I need to charge around 35 percent only and I only have 15 minutes of charging time here which means that I need to shoot some video uh, maybe count some stats here and then go to the restroom and then run over to the convenience store grab some snack and then i have to leave <laughs> that's freaking crazy man after driving five hours i only get a 15 minute break oh well let's finish this right we're here at the charger uh not much to show you uh let's check out charging <laughs> what speed are we getting what speed are we getting <sighs> Oh, we're getting only 120 kilowatt, not 125 for some reason. Well, 121 now. Okay, okay. All right. Uh, I have to hurry. 
Right, we bought some snack, we went to the restroom, and now we are already at 23%. Well, actually, it feels like it's going up kind of slow because it's a big battery, but we are actually getting lots of range here because this, <laughs> you know, the EQS can charge, well, it can receive 100, uh, it can receive 200 kilowatt, but at least when it's receiving 122 kilowatt, it can take 122 kilowatt flat until 70%. But okay, so when I look at the screenshot here, I see that uh, based on the this, this screenshot of the trip meter versus uh, Google, this car underreports distance by as much as 2.2%. So yeah, we need to correct everything uh, according to that one also. And then I estimate that we need to charge to roughly 35%. Actually, maybe I go for almost 40%, but it shouldn't take too long anyway. Yeah, so... Um, all right, now we just have to wait a little bit, or oh, maybe I was rushing it too hard. I still have a little bit of time before we uh, have to go. All right, we are charged 17 minutes and still 122 kilowatt. And we have enough now. I have a little bit of margin just in case. So 30, yeah, let's go, let's go. Well, we are on the run again. Oh man, that was a very much needed uh, charging stop, but I forgot to clean the windscreen. How can I forgot, forget ABC? Uh, okay, sorry if uh, you see a little bit of schmutz on the windscreen on, on that camera over there. Yeah, well, whatever. So we just have to finish this quickly. So yeah, oh man, look over here. We are just cruising in through these curves and the car is not... I was about to say, the car is doing it almost perfectly. <laughs> you see, that's where the difference between Tesla and the rest of the pack. That Tesla will still be able to maintain the curve here where some other cars uh, need you to intervene, otherwise you'll crash and burn. Yeah, but okay, whatever, it's still very, very good, this EQS. So um, yeah, I did some calculation now, and it seems like we should be able to finish this in roughly seven hours. That is going to be a new record. But we just have to see. Yeah, it's not over yet. Yeah, it's not over yet. Whoa, look here. I was like, hmm, is this fog or something? Nope. It's high PM 2.5 levels, 90, 87, shit. And inside, fortunately, it's only four. Oh man, thank God for HEPA filter. 96, 101, shit, it's going up, it's going up. 112, what? The close, 133, what the heck, man? 169, it's purple, 207. Welcome to Chiang Mai, I guess. Shit. 247. What the heck, man? You can... 250. You can see here. It's freaking thick. Thick smoke. The, yeah, they're was, they was burning shit. The further north you go, the, the worse it gets. Shit. Okay, here we have the Baustelle. Okay, we need to deduct a little bit of time here. Maybe two minutes. Yeah, probably two minutes. 350? 360, what the heck is going on upside here? 364, this is not healthy. This is extremely dangerous. Holy macaroni. We are now at the concrete road uh, around Lampang and as always I will give you an impression of how it is. You have never seen the camera be so steady. It's like what did you get? A, did you get a steady cam? Did you get a, a, what do you call it? Uh, yeah whatever. Uh, I just can't remember the word right now. But uh, gimbal, gimbal. Did you get a gimbal? No, no, no. no. I got an EQS. <laughs> <laughs> it is so nice and smooth. You see, we are we are just hammering over the roads. Okay, wait, 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 let me see. We have to try the left lane because the left lane is usually bumpier than the right lane. So uh, you don't see much bouncing. It kind of just. Sh but what what I feel is that the, the car shakes a little bit. That's typically the the response you get from uh, from uh, air suspension. And also the EQS is just super smooth. Okay, I mean it bounces a little bit. You know, it feels like bouncy, bouncy like this. Uh, okay, I'm just exaggerating so to tell you how it is, but 
It is very nice and comfy here. Holy macaroni. My favorite car. Oh, it's like my favorite woman, you know, my favorite lover or something, except for that she's very, very expensive. This, that's, that's the thing with this. This EQS, this EQS costs over 200,000 euros here in Thailand. Holy shit. We can never be together. Yeah, you and me. Yeah, I turned off the light here, by the way. It was too annoying, so. But here now, is, this is nice, this is nice. I can see it down there also. Yeah, yeah, this is nice. Oh, let's enjoy the last, uh, last few moments. But, 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 but when it comes to time, by the way, we have now passed the seven, no, the six hour mark, six hour and five minutes. We have to count as, as uh, 14, um, uh, 54, because you have four minutes of deduction, which means that we're gonna finish well before the seven hour mark holy macaroni fossil cars go home <laughs> well we are now flying up the hills towards daikuntan and normally i i don't bother filming over here because oh you see you see that the digital light actually disturbs the oncoming traffic i've noticed that several times today but yeah normally i i don't bother filming here because the, the camera will be way too shaky uh, it, yeah, you guys would just be annoyed if you if you look at this video, but I, I haven't looked at the footage. Uh, hopefully, it, it can make it into production. But uh, I think it's not shaky at all. It, it, it should be fairly smooth, except for the, uh, the front windscreen is full of bugs. There. That's a different story. Yeah, but, <laughs> but yeah, wow. I mean, this car flies up the hill. It has so much power. It has nice grip, good tires. Uh, what was it again? Um, I don't remember. Eagle F1 something. Yeah, Goodyear Eagle F1, I think it was. But yeah, I can feel this, the, the, the weight of the car. I think it weighs roughly 2,750 something kilograms. So uh, yeah, you don't want to toss it around corners too fast, unlike a Tesla Model uh, 3 or even the, the MG4. Yeah, but man, it is so much fun to hammer up the hills here. We're almost there, and so what we need to do is we take six hours, I mean six minutes before the hour. So we have 25 plus 30, six and a half hours so far. Six and a half hours, we have to drive roughly 25 more kilometers. But we have low battery warning. Shit, 9% battery left. Shit. Come on, come on, come on. Leroy Jenkins. Wow, I just have to point out how quiet it is in here, despite lacking the, the double glazed window, but and we are on, 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 what was that, a dog? We are on concrete surface. And it's supposed to be kind of noisy here. You remember from the other cars, but <laughs> I can just whisper here. Okay, almost done now. We are down to 7%. Okay, a little bit more now. Now we are done. Look, we have 5% uh, battery left. And 90% power, that is massive. <laughs> We are here and 42 is the answer. 42 is the answer. That means 648. <laughs> All right, that is 650. Yeah, 650. That's a new record. All right, we are now charging, getting only 75 kilowatt because the voltage uh, It's probably 375 volt and then 200 amp limited on this charging plug. So that's only 75 kilowatt. The only problem is that I can only charge for six more minutes because someone else booked the 10 o'clock slot and also the 11 o'clock slot. And also all over the Chiang Mai, other places, same there. People are charging and they're booked other chargers. Shit. Okay, whatever. So here is the stats, but this is uncorrected stats. Well, anyway, the challenge has been completed with the EQS, finally. And as expected, it is the fastest car for now. But that's because I still haven't tried the Model 3 long range yet. But okay, anyway, it's still the champion now. That is, that is, uh, that is true. So um, uh, it's a relatively big car, but it is actually fairly efficient for such a big car because, well, actually it also has fat tires, but um, yeah, mainly because it has good drag coefficient. 0 0.20 only. You see here, it's like a, it's like a teardrop shape, huh? That is very impressive. It's actually better than Tesla. Tesla has 0.23. So, um, yeah, but then still, okay. Uh, consumption is still high. high. I mean, com compared to Model Y, actually, Model Y was remarkably efficient. 
uh, but the numbers that's what counts here so the EQS is actually 25 minutes faster than the Model Y this is the rear wheel drive Model Y by the way so yeah you know this is the whole point of me doing these challenges because I want to show Thai people and maybe also you guys in the main channel that um, electric cars they can travel as fast as fossil cars on a long trip that's also like it's just like a 1000 kilometer challenge you know just want to show you that in a long trip you kind of need to stop and take a pee break or a food break anyway today I had only 15 minutes of pit stop break before I had to hammer it again so it's actually a little bit uncomfortable if I was driving a fossil car I would probably stop for about half an hour and in half an hour I can charge a lot yeah so um yeah but I don't know do, do I still want to do these challenges well as long as Thai people are watching it then I will keep doing it in Thailand of course so um yeah but what should I say about the EQS it is very comfortable I'm, I'm getting eaten up by mosquitoes over here but it's very comfortable very quiet quite spacious and if I have to choose between EQS and i7 you know the answer Bimmer Bjorn will still choose EQS yeah <laughs> okay but I think that's gonna be it for now I hope you guys enjoyed this video as always thank you for watching and talk to you later